80 years ago Northern Ireland was a very different place. Among the hustle and bustle of ordinary life, albeit with restrictions in movement and limitations in food, it would have been difficult to ignore the presence of thousands of soldiers of all nationalities. In fact, the country struggled to absorb the surge of British troops, 70,000 by the end of 1940, rising to 100,000 by April 1941. And after the arrival of the Americans in 1942, as well as soldiers from beleaguered European countries, estimates are placed at around 300,000 soldiers living in Northern Ireland at the peak of the war. And when an army is not fighting, it's training. This anti-tank gunnery range at Port Moon on the Causeway coast is one relic to this training. Like many wartime sites across Northern Ireland and the UK, this range is missing all of the ephemeral structures such as classrooms, ablutions and administrative buildings. These would likely have been timber framed, clad in wood or corrugated iron, most likely nissen huts. What does remain, however, is a remarkably complete complex of concrete tracks, firing points and protective structures for the soldiers operating the targetry, as well as the foundations of the timber buildings. Armed with the two-pounder, British troops may have been joined by their American counterparts firing the M3 37mm anti-tank gun. From a series of concrete pads and tracks on the firing point, the gun crews would have aimed at moving targets being towed along a sunken trackway. The target frames and screens would have ridden on wheeled dollies, towed by a wire and pulley system operated from an engine house at the end of a 270m linear track. The crews tasked with scoring or resetting the targets would have taken shelter in brick and concrete bunkers or blockhouses as the guns fired overhead. Carved into the soft red brick of the blockhouses on the range are the names of British and American service personnel. Stationed here for days at a time during anti-tank practices, and to alleviate the boredom, the soldiers scratch their names and where they're from into the brick of the blockhouses to be discovered 80 years later. So
it's only really from the air that we can appreciate the scale and beauty of this range. With the target track trench still on the ground, with the brick and the concrete blockhouses still present behind their earth banks, with nothing but the Atlantic Ocean and Scotland in the distance, the range must have been beautiful in the summer, but very bleak in the winter. Concrete ramps for vehicle access, the purpose of this runway structure is unclear. Perhaps it was to allow armoured vehicles to fire while moving. Perhaps it was for parking. Or it could even have been for target toy machinery. come to the final part of the tour, the ice house. Sitting at the end of the runway, it has been around for hundreds of years, most likely used to store fish caught at the Port Moon fishery just at the bottom of the cliff. It may also have been used to shelter soldiers.